A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. When Jesus came to the other side, to the country of the Gerasenes, two demoniacs coming out of the tombs met him. They were so fierce that no one could pass that way. Suddenly they shouted, What have you to do with us, son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Now a large herd of swine was feeding at some distance from them. The demons begged Jesus, If you cast us out, send us into that herd of swine. And he said to them, Go. So they came out and entered the swine, and suddenly the whole herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea and perished in the water. The swine herds ran off, and going into town, they told the whole story about what had happened to the demoniacs. Then the whole town came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they begged him to leave their neighborhood. I don't know about you, but I, every time I read this story, I'm surprised by that last line. Here we have two men who have been consigned to a living death, living among the tombs, tormented by some sort of demons, some unseen forces, so much so that the town has just given up on them and consigned them to life in the tombs, where they're just out raging about and terrorizing anyone who walks by on the road. And I thought in this story, when when those demoniacs, those men who had been possessed, were were healed and were set free, that the whole town was coming out to meet Jesus, to thank Jesus, to throw a party of celebration for the reunification with their brothers, to toss Jesus on their shoulders and bring him into town for a great celebration. But the whole town came out to meet him, to say to Jesus, please leave. You're not welcome here. Now, we are not given by the text why the townspeople asked Jesus to leave. Perhaps it's because they were um, beholding his power over unseen forces, and, and that power scared them. Sometimes the devil we know, the one that's tormenting our brothers and, and making their lives unlivable, it's, it's awful to behold, but at least it's something we've come to understand or, or live with. We've learned how to live with it. And sometimes watching healing and watching God show up can be so startling as to be frightening. In fact, all throughout scripture, right? Every time an angel or some messenger of, of God shows up, what's the first words that they say to the humans? Do not be afraid. So maybe it was simply the fear and the intimidation at seeing somebody with such power showing up on the shores and doing something they'd been unable to do for years, it seems. Might be that, or it might be something in political, organizing political life. There's a phrase, NIMBY which stands for not in my backyard. And that is, um, we like to see change. We like to see structural change. We like to see people being set free from unjust structures in life or um, burdens placed upon them by society. And we want to see them made whole and made well and no longer suffering, um, no longer bearing that burden and being brought back to fullness of life. But there is this phenomenon where sometimes a church will want to open a soup kitchen or sometimes a church will want to host a, a shelter for people who are in a transition of some sort in their life, whether it's a transition out of homelessness or a transition uh, for re reintegration into society after having been incarcerated, where, where the church wants to host something like that and to help cast off the, the burdens and the chains that have have um, held our brothers and sisters in a kind of living death or living hell. And we will get a response from neighbors who come out and say, please don't bring that kind of wonderful healing here. We want it to happen, but not here in my backyard. So maybe it's a form of that. Because the fact of the matter is this this healing of the demoniacs did not come without a cost. In this healing story, um, the demons say, please send us into the swine. And we have this sort of bizarre image of the pigs running down the, 
the shore, uh, the cliff, right straight into the lake and drowning. Well, those pigs were not just there for decoration or in case a great healer came along. Those were there because they, they were somebody's livelihood or the sustenance for the villages or for the town's food source or maybe a little bit of both. And so this healing of the demoniacs came at a cost for the townspeople. It came out at, at a real and um, definable cost to them. So I wonder as we are moving through this particular time in our life as church, as a society, and as strange currents of healing are breaking out amongst us, praise be, um, but that I wonder if when it comes to the point where those great currents of healing in our nation, especially around racial reconciliation, if those currents of healing bring real costs to the townspeople, um, what our response might be. And my prayer for myself today, uh, my prayer for you um, and for anybody, is that if God shows up on our shores, if Jesus shows up on our shores displaying great power and healing and casting off chains, that our response won't be not in my backyard, but yes, in my backyard. Yes, in my front yard. Yes. Welcome and thank you, Jesus. Amen.